Video games within the last few years have gotten bigger and bigger, which can be highlighted by The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and many more games. These titles have successfully immersed players into their beautiful worlds, providing endless hours of fun, which is why today we're going to be looking forward to what upcoming games could provide us with hundreds of hours of enjoyment. We're going to begin here at the number 7 spot with Assassin's Creed Origins, which is an action-adventure RPG being developed by Ubisoft Montreal and published by Ubisoft. The game is set in 49 BC, an ancient in Egypt during Cleopatra's reign and follows Bayek, a Medjay who eventually will become the founder of the Assassins. The game is played from a third-person view, and its world can be navigated on foot, horseback, or boat. Similar to Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Origins will not feature any multiplayer gameplay. Ubisoft started working on Origins before Unity, and have made their largest game in the series yet, featuring large and small cities with many landmarks including Memphis and Alexandria. The gameplay has been completely reworked, and we will have many more features including a new controller scheme, enemy AI being upgraded, a controllable eagle, a leveling system, crafting, a skill tree, and so much more. One big change is, unlike any of the previous games in the series, there will not be many tall structures to climb to unlock areas of the map. But some really cool returning features will be naval combat and tomb raiding. After taking a year off, Assassin's Creed is back, and it looks completely different, taking inspiration from many games, including The Witcher 3 and Skyrim. The game director who last worked on Assassin's Creed Black Flag has me excited that this could be the game that we long wanted to see in the series. Aside from many gameplay changes, seeing Assassin's Creed Origins concentrate not just on the main story, but on these side stories has me intrigued that this could provide us gamers with a surprising adventure with Bayek. But following that, here at the number 6 spot we have Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, which is a medieval action role-playing game developed by Tale Worlds Entertainment. The game is set 200 years before Mountain Blade Warband, taking place during the decline of the Calradian Empire and the formation of the kingdoms that appear in the previous games. The armor, weapons, and architecture will draw inspiration from 600 to 1100 AD. Furthermore, there are many different vassals which serve the kingdom the way they do. Bannerlord will also include at least eight major factions, each composed of competing clans with their own goals, as well as minor warband factions like mercenaries. The game's graphics have been significantly improved from its predecessor, having better shading and higher detail models. The character animations are created utilizing motion capture technology, and the facial animations will also be updated to improve upon the portrayal of emotions. Gameplay-related features are also being upgraded with a new inventory interface and better artificial intelligence. The siege system is also being improved based on player feedback, with additional tactics being available during sieges. I've eagerly been awaiting for this since 2012 when it was first announced, and while at E3 2017 we got some great new gameplay, I'm hopeful Tale Worlds will give a release date soon. All the improvements, as I mentioned before, sound great, and being someone who invested hundreds of hours into Warband, I'm looking forward to this next experience when it finally arrives. Hopefully soon. Diving here into our top 5 here at the 5 spot we have Vampire which is an action role-playing video game developed by Don't Not Entertainment and published by Focus Home Interactive. The plot revolves around vampire Dr. Jonathan Reed, who is coming to terms with his undead condition. He must deal with being torn between the Hippocratic Oath and his newfound bloodthirsty nature. The player is under no obligation to kill to finish the game. Dialogue options can be used for hunting prey to feed on, which replenishes strength and levels up the lead character. Weapons and supernatural abilities are employed while combating enemies. London serves as a fictionalized, semi-open world composed of four districts. All amenable to destruction should the average health of its citizens diminish. Vampire is based on the 1918 London Spanish flu pandemic. Anyone in the game can be targeted, which will have consequences that affect the citizens of London. Reed can turn people into vampires and will only be able to enter a house with an invitation. Locals will also have different backgrounds, relationships, and daily routines. If killed, they will impart to Reed their last thought. So far, Don't Nod has delivered some solid games, such as Life is Strange, and their next game is Vampire, which as of now has a very interesting premise. Previously, our first look at gameplay had me worried, but the newest E3 2017 gameplay demo made me a lot more excited as it feels a lot of my worries are gone. There certainly are still parts that need to be worked on, but what we've seen so far is just the alpha build, and I truly feel that this could be a pleasant surprise later on here in 2017 when it releases. To the number 4 spot, we have Spider-Man which is an action-adventure video game based on the Marvel comic book superhero Spider-Man, and it is being developed by Insomniac Games. Peter Parker is now 23 years old and interning at a laboratory while he's about to graduate from college. Peter has been Spider-Man for eight years and has settled into his role as protector of New York City. Early in the story, Spider-Man defeats Wilson Fisk, who is also the Kingpin, but a new gang emerges known as the Inner Demons led by Martin Lee, one of New York's most prominent philanthropists, under his alter ego, Mr. Negative. Things get complicated for Peter's personal life, 
life as Martin runs the Feast shelters located across the city and Peter's aunt May works at Feast. Interestingly, Miles Morales has been teased to be involved in the story. Players will be able to use Spider-Man's abilities such as web slinging and wall crawling, as well as new gameplay elements, one of which will be the ability to traverse using parkour. Environmental combat and stealth is also featured in the game. I have to say it, but from what we've seen, this Spider-Man is reminding me of the PlayStation 2 days playing Spider-Man 2. I really cannot explain how hyped I am for this, but so far seeing the combat of Spider-Man leads me to believe that this has game of the year potential. I have to add, I wonder how Miles Morales will be involved in the story and how the Peter Parker aspect will play into the game. When this was first revealed, I was excited, and after seeing some gameplay, I'm even more hyped and ready for this. Now to the number 3 spot, we have Middle Earth Shadow of War which is an open-world action role-playing video game developed by Monolith Productions. The player continues the story of the ranger Talion, who shares his body with the spirit of the elf lord Kelimbrabor, as they use one of the rings of power to amass an army to fight against Sauron and his Nazgul forces. The players control the human Talion, who has several natural, athletic, and combat abilities as a ranger, but also has unique abilities provided by the spirit of the elf lord Kelimbrabor, who shares his body. The players use their combined abilities to complete various missions typically aimed to disrupt the armies of Sauron. The game expands upon Shadow of Mordor's nemesis system to apply to a larger part of the world, including other characters called followers that have behavior guided by how the player character has interacted with them. A lot of the aspects from Shadow of Mordor are returning better than ever. The nemesis system is said to be a lot more robust, huge battles and fortress sieges look to be even better, with a lot more strategy involved. So far, Monolith has been quiet on the story, only revealing a synopsis obviously about taking down Sauron, and recently showing that Shalab will be a part of the story. With many new and fascinating ways to destroy our enemies, Shadow of War is poised to deliver endless hours of gameplay enjoyment with Talion and Kelimbrimbor. Let's just hope that we can get the same within the story and side missions. Shadow of Mordor was certainly a special, unique gameplay experience, and I think most of us are excited to see how much more can be improved from all aspects within the sequel. Now to the number 2 spot, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, which is an open-world western action-adventure video game developed by Rockstar Studios. It will be played from a third-person point of view, featuring single-player and online multiplayer components. The official description of Red Dead Redemption 2 reads as so, Red Dead Redemption 2 is an epic tale of life in America's unforgiving heartland. The game's vast and atmospheric world will also provide the foundation for a brand new online multiplayer experience. Rockstar has been quiet about this next installment, but quite a few leaks have come about, including a believed to be early alpha image, leaked world map which was confirmed to be the real deal by Tech Radar, and a Rockstar insider who claims the game will feature three protagonists of Dutch's gang, but John Marston is not one of them, and many activities from Red Dead Redemption like gang hideouts will return. The latest update we did get from Rockstar was that the game was delayed till spring of 2018. We also did get some new images showing off dual wielding revolvers, the open world, characters, and much more. Rockstar has been quiet for the last couple of years, and finally in spring of 2018, we'll see our next adventure with Red Dead Redemption 2. As it has been said, the game was not delayed because it's in trouble, but because they need more time to perfect more than likely the online component. I truly am confident with Rockstar Games that we'll be experiencing an absolute gem when it finally arrives next year, but for now, all we can do is patiently await as Rockstar does what they do best with staying quiet. But down to our number one spot, we have Cyberpunk 2077. It's an open world action role playing game being developed by CD Projekt Red. The game is intended to be mature and ambitious with character customization being strongly tied to the plot. Some of the planned features are a non-linear story, character classes, both third and first person perspectives, and a multiplayer. Cyberpunk 2077 will take place in a dystopian, futuristic world in which ultra-modern technology coexists with a degenerated human society. It will also take place within Night City, whose in inhabitants speak in non-English languages in which players will have to buy in-game translators to better comprehend what they're saying. In May of 2012, Cyberpunk 2077 began its pre-production, and CD Projekt have stated that this will be far bigger than The Witcher 3. Reportedly, one big hiccup came after The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt's last DLC released, when Cyberpunk 2077's game director was changed and apparently led to all pre-production being scrapped. It was also found in government documents that CD Projekt plans to release Cyberpunk 2077 no later than mid-2019. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt will go down in history as one of the best games ever, and it's exciting to see what their next project will be like. Recently, they have faced some controversy as hackers stole game documents and tried to ransom money out of them, which did not work. This is a game that was first announced in 2012, and it's now in full development. Most of us really just want CD Projekt Red to take their time and hopefully deliver another masterpiece. Cyberpunk 2077 has been barely spoken of in years, in which founders at CD Projekt 
have said it's because they changed their approach to being like rock stars. Well, when Gwent is finally out of the way, we should expect Cyberpunk 2077 to be shown off, and that could and should be in 2018, which hopefully will be blown away with what they have created for us gamers to explore. Anyway guys, gaming in the next few years looks extremely bright. The games featured within this video are just some of the big experiences to come, but I do want to end this video with a question for you to answer in the comment section below, and that is what upcoming game do you think you'll spend the most time playing? Again, thank you for watching, make sure to smack that like button if you did enjoy this video or found any informative value, and consider subscribing to stay up to date on huge upcoming games like the ones featured today, and I'll see you later.